Hey, everybody. Um, my name's Sim Rolfes. Um, thank you for the intro. Um, so, uh, like you mentioned, I uh, did the uh, animations, the kind of promotional um, imagery, static and otherwise, um, for Progress Bar this year. And I figured uh, that Progress Bar was a really excellent opportunity to start um, unpacking a lot of different things I've been doing in terms of real-time performance and improvisation and stuff, but also um, started giving me a lot of ideas for how to approach some, some issues that I had with, with my own practice and, and, and some stuff that I um, was, I felt, I don't know, some, some issues I, I found within just the larger contemporary, primary surreal kind of experimental um, world. Um, and I thought that, you know, a, a, a good way to start to kind of unpack that kind of stuff is to take a stroll uh, or maybe a stumble, depending on how well this tech works, um, through uh, one of the scenes uh, that, that I kind of created for Progress Bar using some of the tools. Um, so just for a quick introduction to those tools, so we've got the, the suit, which was a um, fairly recent thing, um, and which I'll, I'll, I'll kind of back up and give some more context to where it kind of it, things came from beforehand. And then we have the camera, um, so everything is real time, and that's generally how um, just about everything um, that I do is is created. Um, because I've been feeling a bit toothless, I guess, or I don't know uh, that that the, that the kind of surreal, so sometimes esoteric work. You can see some of the stills here. I won't really be focusing on them, but you know it deals with a lot of musicians. Um, Different kind of music context, similar to Progress Bar, um, kind of fashion things, th things like that. But like a, a, a layering of space and trying to kind of subvert um, the reality that the programs create um, to do something that's a little more painterly. I come from a kind of a painting background, um, and that kind of I don't know if it's really abstract expression, but expressionist background of just kind of responding to things and building out scenes and vignettes and just whatever this kind of self-generated thing kind of informs. Um, where everything went. So um, to chart the progress of uh, everything from where I came from to the progress bar, um, I guess it's probably easiest to start with uh, the first video that I, that I did um, using this real-time process. Uh, it was for this group, Amnesia Scanner, um, based out of Berlin, I believe. Um, let's see if this will play. Yeah, here, I turned the sound off. Sorry, pardon me. So just to quickly give some context, since I don't have a whole lot of time up here. Um, this, this video was um, the, 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 the first time using this process, where it was, I was rather than this kind of nice light uh, controller to use as a camera, I was just palming one of these headsets and just like holding it in my hand. And uh, a partner and I went through this scene um, and just rehearsed or we didn't really rehearse, we kind of just choreographed as we went, kind of improvising to the scenes that came up, all the lights, all the movement, everything is done real time. It really is kind of a performance and we kind of just responded to the music and to the, to the set and the scenes um, as they came to us. Um, and that was really, I don't know, that, that, that was the first kind of thread um, where I felt like um, something interesting was coming from it because it, was, it, it seemed to be far more impactful to people than some previous stuff I had done. Um, and something about, I mean, you can kind of tell now just the, the, the connection of the kind of human touch within uh, a digital kind of uh, situation like this can be uh, very compelling. Um, and that's something, so uh, it, it, one thing that I'll, I'll kind of get back to is this kind of uh, trying to misuse these kind of tech tools, because we get, we get more and more every day. They keep coming faster and faster, and we have very little time to take the con like consider their context and their implications um, and find kind of humanity in them. Um, so, I mean, for example, I mean, all this is technically in VR, but I've never built anything out to be in VR. And that's because I found it to be exclusionary and just like not a very compelling medium. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll get to some of the issues. <laughs> I, I might jump around a bit. I've, I've laid this out. So generally when I'm directing, I, I do it kind of spatially, um, where 
you know, the narrative just kind of progresses through um, the space, and then just by, by, you know, the act of moving through it, we are kind of led through it. But um, when it comes to me talking, I'm a lot more scatterbrained than performing, so hopefully we won't jump around too much. Um, but from there, uh, there, there were a few other things, uh, some, some um, animations for this, for, for you know, per, uh, like Adult Swim and other things where we're using the, the it was a similar type of deal, um, VR camera, like uh, uh, motion control, kind of improving inside of scenes, trying to find what is the most compelling rather than kind of dictating um, the script too much beforehand. Um, that's kind of beside the point, but it's just for context to where I'm coming from, um, there's that. Um, so in any case, so a, a, a big kind of, my, my, my kind of entry point into Progress Bar was my collaboration with Michael Oswell, who handled the brilliant uh, work for the first two seasons, where he, you can see, um, where's my 3D guy? Can I, there we go, yes. <laughs> where he um, integrated uh, the musicians' names uh, within the story. Um, and kind of whether they be referred to, uh, oftentimes, yeah, they're referred to the story like they're traveling along with him or some sort of future um, scenario. And that was, that, that was a, a big point for me because I, when I was asked to kind of, you know, uh, take on the, the next season, this season of Progress Bar, I, that, that way of constructing narrative in a very maximalist um, kind of, Manipul not manipulative, but like taking the details of this show that are normally so rigid and utilizing them as, as like raw material for building out the narrative. This was really compelling to me. And in the same way, um, as it keeps going back to kind of improv, having some sort of s structure to kind of respond to and build scenes out and, and, and riff on and stuff. So um, let me quickly play uh, episode, whoa, <laughs> wrong button, episode three, which was the kind of the most well-received, it seemed like, uh, out of the last four, where it was a bit more concrete of a narrative. Um, There's dialogue happening. Okay. I, I saw Klein dance this way. Um, I know they're going to have the answers for me for the next month. Um, uh, let, me um, hey, let me turn the volume up, sorry. For this much at this place. Woo! There we go. Yeah, I mean, for people who are functionally back back in via alcohol, so it seems pretty blessed out. So, yeah. Do you think they're going to the talks? I assume so. It means a pretty highbrow crowd, right? I like the bass. <laughs> ah, this one is rather off in front. I liked your last video. Just esoteric enough to appeal to people who find progressive events sponsored by Red Bull problematic. Hey, is that club culture? <laughs> That was me, sorry. It's been too long to promote. <laughs> Is that James Messiah? Okay, there, there are, there's a crowd this way, so I'm gonna follow. Did I tell resident advisor? Shut up. Wow, what the, what is this? Okay, so, point being, um, taking the, the kind of, History, the, the 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 format that Michael had developed for still imagery, this kind of like really beautiful it, like Im embedding of the image with with um, all the info in in this way where the the interpretation of the info can be taken different ways. Um, that's kind of how I've been playing with it lately, and the some some interesting things kind of came out of out of that. Um, from that, it was you know uh, f figuring out. So <laughs> here's my this is my way of presenting. <laughs> Different note cards. Um, it, figuring out how to uh, misuse, so misuse it, uh, the, the, the technology um, for something that's maybe, I don't, I don't know if it's really humanist is, is what I'm trying to go for, but something that, it, what I'll get to is a, an issue that I find um, oftentimes within the uh, contemporary digital experimental scene or whatever is um, the, because of the increasingly rapid iteration or development of creative tech tools, we are not given the time to, like I said, kind of feel it out. Um, and so it, we end up with a lot of tech demos and things that functionally are just kind of um, tech demos for the companies that put them out. Um, and so, I, and I, I find that, I, I, I say that as a kind of internal critique um, to, to the scene, but also to myself. So um, the, 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 this, this kind of method of, uh, 
improv improvisation and moving through these spaces is, is one way I've been trying to deal with it. Let's see, where's the arm? There we go. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll get to that one later. We're not far enough. <laughs> Which this one? Oh, yeah. And, and, and so um, improvisation um, has been, I've been looking to it. I, I, I'm no expert by any means. Um, being in, having been in Chicago for a while, and now I live in New York, but having been in Chicago and been around a lot of improv comedians there and in LA, the way that they expand and then heighten um, a shared reality um, and build together a narrative is super compelling to me. And, it was, and, and when I was doing research about it um, for some of the Shadow Channel um, uh, workshops that we did early in, er, earlier in the week, which I'll play silently right now. Where is it? Nope. Um, I'll keep talking, but th this one was done in the span of like a day uh, earlier this week where we had the whole class kind of start, they built out a very like Sam rolfe -y style script, which was probably like satire, like poking fun at me, with, which is totally fine and good. Um, we built out kind of a similar scene and started, started kind of figuring out some sort of fan fiction-ish um, area to then explore kind of some internal kind of art critique of... Uh, these like DIY scenes and, and like artist curator relationships and stuff like that. But in any case, so the, my, my um, kind of interest in improv and in all of this real time stuff partially is if you look at the history of improv, um, it actually started as a like workers' rights um, or like a workers' community thing where it was not, comedy didn't enter into it until um, a decade or so later. Um, it started out as just community coming together and kind of. Uh, brainstorming, basically, and acting out different uh, 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 scenarios, different like power structures. Um, what do you do when, like, th when when the cops show up and ask for your papers, type of thing? Which seemed like a a really interesting way to move forward, um, using this kind of platform or using some sort of thing where people are a, a game space in some way, um, where um, to develop artwork or video, whatever. Um, that is maybe a, a little bit more broadly accessible. And that kind of gets to my, another issue that I, I generally seem to have, is that with this fetishization of the tech tools and, and this kind of craft and just the, the nuts and bolts of it, um, it reminds me of the, the, the turntable scene that I kind of grew up in when I was a teenager, in that it was, it was this incredible use, virtuosic use of... Um, technology and manipulating it and, and kind of creating new things out of this kind of, I don't know, amalgamation of things. But it became so self-referential and um, just generally self-interested um, that it just it, it more or less stagnated. And, that's, and I, I see that in my own work to a certain extent and, and just in, in more broadly. And, that's, and again, with Progress Bar, it was an excellent opportunity to start to figure that out. Um, so, so I started attempting memes. I'm sorry. Uh, but that was what I did, and, it's, and it, they've been starting to go um, okay. Um, here, let me pause this light. This is getting upsetting. Okay. Um, so I, I'd worked in some kind of, previously uh, I got commissioned to do some, to take my still work and try and uh, quote unquote create memes, which um, is not easy for someone to do if you're like, if you create OC, if you create original content memes in, in general rely on a shared cultural kind of reference. And um, me making things like that, like, like this, um, there's no shared cultural re reference for that outside of just like horror or body horror or something like that, um, which so often is how my work and other work in kind of the kind of esoteric experimental worlds um, is interpreted. Like it may be a, a small subset of some scene may understand your references enough to fully get the context of it or the message or whatever, but so often it's flattened to eye candy or psychedelia, which is valid, I don't want to say it's not, um, but it seems like building out a, um, the beginnings of like stepping stones to a, a greater understanding of, of a, a surreal or experimental practice, um, not diluting it, but understanding or figuring out how to interface with a broader um, audience is a important thing to figure out. It's something that I personally am, have been really trying to focus on working on. And, and Progress Bar through this has been kind of a nice playground for trying to figure that out. So, uh, so in kind of, uh, 
trying to reformat um, some of the promotional stuff. Whoa. <laughs> Hold up. We're caught under the table. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. Um, and and with, with mixed success, I think some of them have been, I've noticed, and, and I'll show some, some other work by some, some artists, um, just friends of mine within, not, not the, def the definitive source, but just people that I follow who have done, done similar kind of things with, with some success. Um, formatting at like one level of, you know, a shared cultural reference is, is the format, and I've been trying to do that with um, some kind of YouTuber uh, format plays where it's like a, a selfie video, and I, I'll show that in a minute. And, but also just formatting a thing where you have some, co like, you, people understand the meme format, and so you then, it's like the most basic stepping stone to starting to pull it apart, um, or at least insert some sort of, the, the, like captions, having captions and having uh, Twitter screenshots as, uh, as a header, was a really interesting form of narrative that I, that I kind of came across during all this because it allows, allowed me to be a lot more kind of just explicit with what I was trying to say um, and still kind of, you know, mix it into the, to the overall body of the, of the work, but at least give it some beginning point uh, for, for referencing. Um, and here, let's get the party going. Hold on. Here we go. So we're inside um, one of the other scenes. And for the for 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 uh, episode three, this is the scene for episode four. Um, I kind of just uh, walked around in it for a while and and had the list of musician names and began to fit that into the into the narrative as I as I went and start and would just record um, on my iPhone and this motion capture suit going through the space and kind of just building it out um, as we went, which was cool. I think ideally going forward, um, a scenario similar to the one with um, Shadow Channel would have been, is even better because again, I, I feel like so much of this is, it's so easy to be auteurish with this type of stuff and be very, co be like covet the, the, the tech and, and, um, and the narrative and all that. And I, I know I do that myself. So um, a, a, in addition to Use it, working within memes and captioning and kind of forum culture and stuff like that, and um, improv and kind of more broad community-based kind of practices, and um, I should mention more rapid development of uh, the, these these kind of productions. Like the last few um, progress bar episodes took maybe, I mean, it took it, it, it took a fair amount, maybe a week in preparation, but but then the actual production of it, I, the last one I got down to like four days, which is pretty fast for like a you know, few minute animation. Um, so anyway, uh, and I, I think that's, and that, that plays into the whole meme thing because then you want to, which gets into the use, you, the use of the um, use of memes as a strategy for disseminating, which is kind of what I'm, I'm getting towards um, <laughs> in a roundabout way. Um, so I, I, I as I started, we started putting these things out, I started noticing that it, the videos would just kind of pop up in, in scenes and um, communities that I would not expect or necessarily want. Like, for example, the most recent one was this guy, uh, Mr. Descent, high, high nerve or high whatever, who reposted my stuff and uh, who is like a, a narco capitalist vegan transphobe pickup artist, which I, I, I think is. One, a very confusing worldview, um, but I probably just shorthand or like longhand for like a, a, um, a shitlord or something. But so, you know, he's probably, it, but this was a big thing for me. And I'd seen it kind of pop up less comically <laughs> previously. This one was clearly the most like, what the hell is going on? But, um, but I, I'd seen this happen kind of more and more as I started slowly figuring out the means um, to... I don't know, give, give a foothold to, to the work. And, it, and, and a bit of a revelation that I had, which I, I mean, it's, it's still early, but it was, the, was a, a potential use for, or weaponization, or practical use for um, surrealism, for you know, experimentalism, for esotericism, for the, for the kind of murky, layered intensity that I, that I personally, and, I, and probably many of you, are, are feel conversant in and comfortable with, but often gets flattened to, you know, weird, crazy stuff when it gets outside of whatever scene. Um, and it made me realize that, you know, through, th that, that if one can um, 
format the work in a way that it is like has the beginnings of a foothold for somebody to begin starting enjoying it, or or it's compelling beyond just its kind of eye candy. Um, that surrealism or or whatever all this is um, could be kind of like a sugar pill for or or kind of a subversive device for disseminating it across into different scenes, um, into different lo like groups and organizations that would, would not otherwise be open to, say, like uh, a, a radical leftist kind of um, production or whatever, um, which was kind of an exciting idea for me because as I was kind of talking about, so much of all of this is just an attempt to find some sort of, um, and I don't know, not necessarily empowerment, but find some sort of power to uh, affect things rather than just do kind of humanist performative reactions um, and kind of displays, and I don't know. Um, and, and this is kind of a personal thing, but it's, I, it feels to me like it's maybe applicable um, outside my own personal practice. Um, I do run into, I wanted to quote my friend um, Nora Khan, who's a brilliant writer. Um, she had written something on Facebook that made me, rem that reminded me of um, kind of my issue that I, or like some, pushback that I get, especially from kind of like experimental scenes or whatever, or especially people who are um, interested in the, the tech, where um, any sort of internal critique about the efficacy of it or, you know, or, you know, are we just like being good branding for um, venture capital companies or, or, you know, startups with like cool creative tech and shit. Um, I tend to get like, like, oh, I'm harshing everybody's buzz, man. Um, but I just felt like it was uh, worth quoting Nora that she, she, I, I, felt, I felt like very well said. Um, wow, can I turn off this, this light first though? Thank you, okay. Um, also not totally uncompromising un criticism of technology is essential because not only is communication technology designed to erase and eliminate its own critique, the idea, ideology driving it values positivity, reactive good vibes, and unreflective warm feelings over looking at the mess, complication, and continual violence of real life, real labor, labor and real struggle. And um, I don't know, that, that just seemed to really fit just uh, uh, my own um, worry of we're so, we, uh, I and, and it seems like the, the greater kind of digital art experimentalist world at large is so ready to just gobble up whatever new thing comes out. We have like, you, and, and, it's, and it's, you know, it's in hand with, with um, blogger and headline culture and gadget culture where it's like, it, it, it's like, this artist 3D printed a drone to drop Bitcoin on what, and it's like, there's no content, it's just like an ad. And like, it's cool, but like, and, 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 and you know, that is a valid thing, but that's not necessarily what we're all trying to do. Um, and, because, and, you know, if you, if you look historically, the space between lithography and screen printing was far greater, or, or what, you know, whatever, name whatever, acrylic and, and oil, was far greater than any sort of new tech development that we get these days. And so we're not afforded enough time to figure out what it's good for, feel out the boundaries, it becomes fashion, it becomes style, it becomes a fad. Like, I miss data moshing. Does anybody data mosh anymore? Like, that, like I think data moshing's cool. But my point being, it's just it comes and it goes so quickly, and so and and so everything is reduced to a tutorial video, a tech demo. We we get the thing, we do a tutorial, we put it out online. People love it because it's novel and it's interesting, it's compelling for for that amount of time. But I don't really feel like there's much longevity past that. Um, and I am not saying that I have all the answers, but um, this whole thing um, is has been my uh, this whole thing in in, in tandem with beginning to try and figure out how, how does one interface um, with, a, with a community, a larger community, and fit their you know, specific art practice with, uh, with it, like, allow for a, a, the beginnings of uh, an appreciation and understanding, um, at least have begun to kind of show me the way on that. I think I personally have a lot of work, um, and I think that, but I, but I do think that, um, this whole practice of surrealism, experimentalism, as like just intense, intense, meaningful stuff um, can be powerful and um, potentially uh, politically or, or, or just socially impactful um, as much as it often says it is. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I'll leave you with. Those were my strategies um, for, for, for tr attempting that. And um, I 
would be interested to hear anybody else's thoughts on the matter. But thank you. Let's see. Let's put this. Thanks, Sam. I think we've got time for um, a couple of questions. We can leave my HDMI going while we're... <laughs> if anyone has a question from the audience. Well, it's lagging a little bit. Oh, well. Um, I was yep. just wondering how you kind of balance this, or how you walk this tightrope of like promoting events and experimenting. How you kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, it helps. I mean, having Progress Bar be the partner on that is what facilitates that. Give, giving, giving the ground to like, you know, put really essential elements of a promotion in like embedded into a, like a, a pretty obtuse dialogue is a privilege in and of itself. Um, so I, and I am definitely, I mean, the fact that I've been able to make my, make use, my, make my personal practice be um, something that has been in tandem with musicians and, and artists and stuff has been some, something that's intentional, but I acknowledge it's totally like a privilege that I find people who are down for me to attempt that stuff. Um, yeah, because, you know, most people are not, oftentimes it's not gonna, a client's not gonna be down for that. Um, yeah, this one here. I just uh, wondered how much of your digital avatars reflect yourself? Hmm. Um, well, uh, this, this one doesn't, th this one's kind of just like a random NPC. Um, I will say, let's see, can I, which one? Let's play. The, the, the progress bar ones are more into me, and I, and, and I didn't really get into it, but I've got a, a, a kind of a new, but my most recent body of work is doing a lot of flips on YouTuber culture, which has a lot of, I don't know, it deals with like character and personality and framing really interestingly, but um, let's see, where is it? Um, I had started for episode two, I did kind of like, oh, it's flip, sorry, but anyway, um, a, a, a kind of like, basically it was a, it was a response video to the first episode video, um, where I was ho holding the camera and I'm doing kind of like a selfie YouTuber style, like conspiratorial, uh, you know, direct camera, like, you know, here, I'll just, here, I'll play some of the, let's see. Oh, maybe it's not. Anyway, um, but that, like, these characters and then uh, uh, some characters that I'm playing in this uh, show we're putting together for Super Deluxe um, are me, are, an, are a heightened uh, version of me in terms of just like, because partially just like I'm not a good actor, and but I can play like manic and nervous and terrified very well, so that's where I go. Um, and you know, YouTuber culture a lots for that. There's a lot of examples out there, so it's my it's my pleasure to play that role um, of a um, borderline schizophrenic um, mess. There was another one of you. Thank you so much for your presentation. In the beginning, you said you were gonna get more into the suit. Mm. And then you didn't, so... And then I didn't. Yeah, that's not, that sounds like me. <laughs> yeah. What would you like to know about the suit? Well, I would like to know what you were going to say about it. <laughs> See, that was, a, that was past Sam, and we're, we're not there anymore. Um, I mean, uh, it probably... The, the suit was... A, okay, I think I remember. Um, the, the suit was a big thing for me because previously, as you saw with the Amnesia Scanner video, it's all camera work. Um, the, 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 it's like a first person shooter, you are, the cameraman is the sole performer. The suit was a big thing because I hate keyframing, I hate doing, you know, it's just not expressive, you can't just riff. Um, and so the suit was a big thing for me and my team just in that it allowed us to kind of embody the characters more than like a first person shooter or finding um, situ scenarios and formats where it had to be like the, the camera was the main um, thing. I think at this point, I'm, I'm trying to pull back on the shaky cam uh, and do more with the with the suit, suits going forward, but yeah, that was probably what I meant. Any more? Hi, right. thank you for your presentation. Very inspiring. Um, about the topic on uh, how to transgress uh, into different uh, scenes or uh, applications in different worlds, mm -hmm. um, would one be uh, to give meaning or a specific meaning to what you're doing, but by doing so, would that prevent you from being attractive for these tech companies that want to push through all this tech through your scene? So if you, to make it clear, um, if you would 
state political statements mm -hmm. on, for, for example, um, whatever, environmental kind of stuff or address certain uh, social problems, then you would become a political person or venture. And there's, a, and, and so, yeah, politically or potentially not attractive for these tech companies and stuff. Sure, um, absolutely. I, I would say that I, do, um, I don't, we are, the suit's sponsored, but they don't really ask much from us. Everything else is, pre, is pretty much just um, bought. Um, I think my, so I, for example, uh, one reason, I mean, one reason I, I stick with primary, with a lot of music collaborators and clients is because they allow for me to insert that, like they're, they're cool with that and they want a political kind of, you know, in, in, like message embedded in it. Um, I don't think that that, I think if you're trying to do that outside of, you know, traditionally progressive client bases, then it's going to be harder to be subversive with that. Um, I think maybe more w what I was kind of referring to when, when we're beholden to tech companies for this stuff is just when it's, when it, when the work itself is, is just a, basically a tech demo, like you're doing a tutorial, like I learned how to do face tracking, um, watch me do face tracking. And that's more or less it. And like so often, I see a lot of shows or whatever where there's a lot of like pseudo anthropological kind of curatorial stuff kind of draped on it as a justification for it being a cultural object or something like that. Um, I don't know, I, I, it seems pretty hollow to me. So, that, that, so I at least, at least personally, I stay independent from the, the, the tech companies um, in that I'm not getting money from them. Um, I am buying their stuff, um, but I am at least trying to, the hope is, reuse it and refigure it for maybe a m more progressive, ideally, aspirationally, uh, cause. Hopefully that answered it. Thank you. I think oh, oh. Um, <laughs> we're just about out of time.